Good morning. Because we wouldn't record this in the afternoon like some lazy fucks. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't record a podcast before the sun comes up, you're actually a bitch. <laughs> you're so lazy. Honestly, we're, we're just the best. We're just the best. Oh, my God. We're clowns. Good morning, uh, everybody. I'm There's sorry. I, to... we've, we've listened to too much. Like I was listening to David Goggins this morning. You were listening to Wes Watson, and now we're just angry right now. We, but insufferable. In a good we're insufferable. But you know what else doesn't stand a chance? Our goals. So, Facts. It's fucking going. And you know what? We can't wait to share that with you guys. We can't mm-hmm. wait to share the same energy with you guys. So you guys have the same energy going in your day. I guess this is the ninth episode of your favorite two fitness puppies, golden retrievers with a little bit of Rottweiler in them, a little bit of love, most importantly. Um, Michael, what are we talking about today? We are going to crack the code, which I feel like we say we're going to do every episode. And <laughs> it's just like we're our just ears God's are, gift to earth. Our ears are up to the safe of fitness and every episode you listen to, we get a new click in the combination. We get closer every time. I so like this that. episode, we're going to crack the code for the men. Now, before you tune out immediately as a female or say, F these misogynists, what we really mean is that men and women are fundamentally wired a little bit different. Us having at least a little bit of experience with men. I mean, I don't know about Yusuf, but I have a ton of experience as a male. Um, (laughs) Pause. Pause. As men, not with men. Um, (laughs) As I was saying, because we know what it's like to be a guy, we know what it takes to get fit as a guy, which is we require intense extreme scrutinizing idiot proof simplicity women you tend to be a little more intuitive and a little bit better at that kind of thing so therefore we're saying we're going to target the men for this episode but if you're a lady you'll absolutely get value out of this so stay tuned we're not misogynist we're not isolating you we'd like everybody to get help out of this but we have broken down send it to your man send it to your man send it to anyone that you know a coworker of yours that if he like under his breath says i'm frustrated about fitness or my diet or this or that send this to him we really want to make this something that crosses again none of us are really that different i just feel like this is just going to help and we're excited to share exactly and to that tune we have decided to just have an open dialogue flow state kind of conversation around what we believe the most actionable practical like i said idiot proof simple things you can do in our three pillars that we've built our our company and our coaching community around but we believe falls into three categories when it comes to getting fit, jacked, ripped, and sexy. Fitness, nutrition, and mindfulness and or mindset. So we're going to talk about some of our favorite individual points. I think we have two or three each that we're going to share, expand on them a little bit. And by the end of this episode, basically what we're really getting at is there should be absolutely no mother effing excuse not to be a fitter, better you each and every single day. Yes. You want to start with fitness? Yeah, I think a great way to start is with personal inventory. So I think the best thing that for any guy to do is to take inventory of your current body fat percentage and your weight, your height. You, most of you guys know your weight and your height, check your body fat percentage, just check to see where you're at. And this may hurt a lot. And this may also be, I look at it in a positive thing, your childhood, your, your post puberty weight and frame, unless you trained deliberately is just a blob right now it's it's and it's honestly a giant disservice to typically your mind because most most guys would be willing to bet have insanely incredible goals but if you go out and go to any walmart any airport you people watch it really doesn't look like a lot of us are taking honest inventory the only reason why is because we're focused on one thing our lives and a lot of times that's our livelihood our work our passion our pursuits our children some of us got married younger some of us have kids younger but some of us start climbing the corporate ladder younger but we're focused and what none, what none of us are is dumb or really, really stupid or really lazy. I think what a lot of us are is, is, is just mis, a little misguided, a little lost. And I, don't, I hope this doesn't sound mean, but this is just objective with the playing field. Like I've, I feel like me and you, one of, the, one of the things in fitness that you and I have really processed and registered is the fact that we have a fair shot and so does everybody. So no matter where you are, even if it's right now, what you're looking at is not you which is the first thing I think we hear we hear the most is I don't look like myself. I don't feel like myself. You know that 10.0 version of you is in there. What it starts with is getting clear on where you are right now. Most of us, our goal is going to be one of two things. It's going to be going from fat to fit or from skinny to jacked. Either way, you end up with high muscle 
and low fat mass. There is nothing else besides feeling great and becoming an, a, a dopamine farm, a serotonin farm, and endure, uh, basically a pharmacy of energy and emotion and positivity and manlyhood. So what Michael does is he runs like crazy because it makes him a pharmaceutical set, like a, an actual positive. He's infectious. Like he did his workout today, talk, talk me off a ledge and just was that bit of like confident mass. It sounds weird. Confident masculinity. That's just like, it's just correct. It's like regulated. It's, it's for the good of everybody. So you've got two goals, F fat to fit or from skinny to fit. That's it. Either way, that fit is the same thing and it looks a little different on everybody, mm -hmm. but it starts with knowing what your fat mass is, lowering it, and increasing your muscle mass. Now, on that premise alone, that's the overview, I think, of fitness. Build muscle, burn body fat. There is nothing else. And get sh in shape and be practical, obviously. Like, don't just be like, we're not going to even go there. But build muscle, burn body fat. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that, Michael, on that note? No, I think you said everyone's a little misguided and confused that can't seem to find and make time. Shout out to our elite client, Kyle, who's going to have the sickest transformation possibly in the history of ever uh, in fitness. But he had mentioned I'd, I'd spent so many years putting time, effort, and energy into other people, my business. He's a business owner, very successful into my business, my children, my family, others, my colleagues. And I have not had the time to put energy into myself or figured out the structure of which where I can fit that time and energy, putting it into myself, into my day. And that's exactly what we want to talk about is some people mm. genuinely feel like they don't have time, which plays into that misguided, confused. The fact of the matter is you can, you know, it's just five minutes, right? Just like your mom said, Yep. everyone yep. has five or 10 minutes, four or five times a day to at least maintain forward progress. Maybe it's not a gym workout. Maybe it's not exactly what you had programmed, it's but it's push up. It's something. Yeah. It's hitting the a floor on a walk. It's going yeah. for a walk. It's going for a jog. It's, which segues nicely into what are the practical steps yep. and my favorite principles and his favorite principles to segue off of that was number one, set minimums for yourself. I, I personally realized recently with the FU 24 challenge and all the people doing it, I think sometimes it can be helpful instead of saying, I need, I need to hit the gym five times a week and setting that maximum for yourself. Maybe try setting a minimum say no matter what I, I will not compromise on two to three workouts a week. Maybe five is the goal, but my floor is, is three. Like for me, my floor is 10,000 steps. Mm -hmm. I know not every day, some things, sometimes things are just going to get crazy and I won't be able to hit my 15 or my 20, but I am always hitting 10 because I'm not going to miss a day without brushing my teeth or showering. Why would I miss a week without three workouts? Why would I miss a day without 10,000 steps? You have to shift mm -hmm. your perspective. So from a gym minimum, three times a week, get in there and train hard. If you don't have a program yet, just get in the habit of walking in the doors and sweating. And then we can talk mm -hmm. about workout programming. What do you think? Yeah, I think one and make that even hopefully simpler. I thought, I thought that was fan minimum three. I think what we end up getting at is find a fitness philosophy that you personally align with. So that also means find people who are influencers and that type of fitness are interested in. If you're interested in CrossFit, then I hope you find, I hope you try and become the best CrossFitter that there is. If you're into building muscle and training and go, going through recomp, I hope you're interested in being the best that is. So you find people who illuminate those steps for you, people who have done it before. What you have to find is inspiration. And what inspiration is, inspiration is kind of like a calling. It's like your higher self. You know that 10.0 version of you. So there's people who've done the thing, physiques that you're mesmerized by. Um, find people who illuminate that path for you that really speak to you kind of like us and also other, I kind of hate that influencers are kind of getting a bad rap right now. Cause everyone's becoming an influencer. Like everyone's yeah. recording themselves at the gym, this and that, but you'll, you have, we all have BS detectors as to who's an influencer, and who's not find a philosophy that you resonate with and try and guide yourself alongside of it. That comes at yes, gym minimum three days a week to build muscle. And then also your daily threshold. You need a daily threshold. That thing, I think I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually really like, you shouldn't have a zero day where you don't get 10,000 steps. You don't hit a workout. You don't sleep and you don't make any healthy choices for yourself. That's like the only way to fuck up. However, that's also the normal. That's the average right now is like kind of just maybe every now and then maybe even two days in a row of no activity, no steps, no good food or no sunlight. Have, I think it should be a little bit of a daily minimum. Actually, a lot of a daily minimum. Something. You should find 
you should be able to prove to yourself that you're him at least once a day. Because if you're not, no one else is. Or yeah. you're at the, at the mercy of maybe you'll have a good day at work, but you're setting yourself up short because you're not showing up as your best you at work. If you're not showing up as your most elevated, fiery self. Like why, why wouldn't you want to go into work with a chest pump? Or proving to yourself, damn, I had 50 lined up and that was hard at 25 and I did it anyway. I proved it to me and they're going to feel it. They're going to see it. Michael, can you tie in something that you brought up on a call one time? You brought up as the, one of the youngest guys in, typically in meetings, you drew a presence about yourself. You drew an aura about yourself in comparison to some other timed people, other, mm -hmm. other eras. What was that like for you? And can you describe what, what could you, can you share a bit more about what that was like? Yeah. So that's a good callback actually that plays perfectly to this conversation. So I think we were, we were on the elite call maybe with Kyle, I think is what we were, we were discussing being an yeah. executive, because as y'all know, if you've been listening, I was in corporate America, nine to five, uh, sales gig, and then consulting before I started doing this full time with Yusuf. And I was very successful in college in a sales program, which gave me leverage to get into a job that otherwise you may need some industry experience for automatically, thereby making you older. So I stepped into this job mm -hmm. at 23 or 22 years old out of school. And in my first company of 350 employees, I was the youngest guy by 10 years. So mm -hmm. at the bare minimum, I'm someone 10 years, my seniors in the room with me. So to prove I'm worth my weight and salt to these employees and the decision makers I was working with in sales, being C-suite executives, VPs of small businesses, let's just call it what it is, a bunch of freaking 40 to 60 year old white dudes that are very biased, mm -hmm. just born in the yeah. South, set in their way, boomers. Very and set in their way is the word. Yes. Yeah. They, and yeah. ageism is very real in corporate America. Some of you can relate. So they, I walk in and they see me first as the young buck per se. Like, what is this greenhorn? They always, they always used to call me a greenhorn, like a young sheep, I think is the analogy mm. they're drawing. Old Southern dudes are weird. Point is, I had to prove I knew what I was talking about in my executive presence, how I carried myself, the information and value I delivered and brought to the table. But what Yusuf is referring to that was so important was that I had a legitimate physical prowess and from a human nature standpoint, whether you admit it or realize it or not, men, especially you you size people up as soon as they come in a room and immediately, immediately you're lying. And if you're saying you don't, if I showed up in a golf polo and I, I had a, you know, it was tight around the chest and it was hugging my arms. I look different than mm -hmm. the average corporate American. That's 50 pounds overweight. Imagine your cubicle buddy or your next door neighbor. You live in an apartment floor next door neighbor. All of a sudden is a massive man. Like you thought you were the big dog on your floor or your cubicle, all of a sudden, if you think you don't size people up, all of a sudden you respect him. Like if he's jacked, if yeah. he's fit, you respect him immediately. Yeah. And Sorry, what that I, brought, I no, no, that's visual. valuable. What that brought and the, the point we're driving home is I was able to prove I was worth my weight in salt over time and build trust in these guys, but that takes just that time. In, in having a physique or having mm -hmm. a physical prowess about you, you innately automatically prove that I know something they don't. Or they will say this, that guy's clearly doing something that I'm not actually that you're harder and you're not soft. Yes. That we what can is, trust you. What we, can, Bedros, we can lean on you. Bedros Koulian has a clip from his podcast where he says, when I, when I see a guy walk into a room for a meeting and he's fit, mm -hmm. I think yes. immediately of personality traits, he practices discipline. He practices delayed gratification. He respects himself. Mm -hmm. Your, your physical body is, is a representation of how you live internally. Frequency precedes form. It, it, what it's indicative of is Michael's mindset. Like if you walk, you walk into, you walk into a corporate office or walk into a room and you see Michael is fucking, this sounds weird. Michael is hard. as compared to a bunch of jiggly people. Like you trust him more. You know why? Because he's hard. Who would you lean on when you need him to carry the meeting or the podcast? Sometimes a hard motherfucker. You wouldn't do it on the soft jiggly Joe doughboy. boy. You just wouldn't. Pause. <laughs> so what we're, what we're really proving with, with, with your physical trust the one trust that you were given is that your body is an offering and a statement of also trust with what you've done with yourself why would i treat someone the same who has not put themselves through the same things and think all of a sudden they they demand the same equal respect it sounds superficial it sounds fucked up but it's unspoken and the only people who are trying to purport oh no everyone's equal all this and that i get it we're all equal in essence and potential absolutely but there are people who the only people who will be offended by this are those with L records, losing streaks. And you're the you're the exact people who are gonna look at it and be like, fuck, he's right. Okay, 
I'm going to do it for me. And it's not even that I'm right. It's that you believe in it. You know it in yourself too. Because no one's really proud of a soft, jiggly appearance. And if you, if you say you are, I bet you lie about a lot of other things too. I just, I can't, I can't, I can't not see a fact on that. Yep. Yeah. Your appearance is a statement. It's an offering. So build muscle, find a philosophy that you like. And also most importantly, see that this really is a tool for training your mind, which may segue us into, how do you feel about fitness? We feel covered on fitness. I was going to say it segues gym. me in my last point, which of fitness, which is sort of a fitness slash mindset. Apologize. I wasn't sure where to put it. No, you're good. When feeling on, unmo- I have written something you said, or at least to the effect of when feeling unmotivated, hit the floor. If you're feeling hungry because you're bored or you really don't want to go to the gym, crank push-ups to failure, one set, however many that is, 10, 20, 50, you're going to feel more motivated. A little mm-hmm. bit of a pain trigger, it's going to give you some neurotransmitter releases, some dopamine, some adrenaline. If you're feeling unmotivated, make that David Goggins one-second decision and say, right now, I can hit the floor. The mm-hmm. one-second decision is key in moments like that. Right now, I can hit the floor, I can do 10 burpees. Right now, I can hit the floor, I can do 10 push-ups. I call it fitness because you're going to do a physical act, but if you're ever feeling unmotivated, if you're ever feeling like you really need a kick in the ass, kick yourself in the ass, do some push-ups, hit the floor. And then we can, we can talk about a uh, mindset on that note. Cause I think it flows nicely into that piece. Yeah, totally. Um, with mindset, I, actually, maybe we could, sorry, I don't mean to pivot. I think that may, what do you think about nu- nutrition going to nutrition? Well, I know we have it ordered by fitness, nutrition, know, mindset, fitness nutrition. Yeah. But I mean, there's no rules. It's our fucking podcast. I think I think because mindset will be a good bow on everything. Yeah, let's do okay. nutrition. Okay. Hello, everybody. After a brief pause, we we confirmed just in case we any of us felt a type of way if we did nutrition or mindfulness, vice versa. We we we're gonna go into nutrition because it fits fitness, nutrition, mindfulness, and then also mindfulness will be a great bow on the episode. And that last slap in the dick to get you out fired up to go eat some chipotle and eat some chicken some steak and do some (laughs) push-ups so let's go into let's go into nutrition shall we um hey michael a question for you what are the answers to food how does it how does a guy get jacked what do i do so i'm i'm awake again i've 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 heard the i've heard the pin crack a little bit more i've heard the click in the safe of fitness how do i eat what do i do what's what what does it take for me to be successful in eating all right, assuming I'm talking to a male person and we need it to be devastatingly simple, I'm going to get real close to the mic. I'm going to make it devastatingly simple. Okay. If it was at one point alive, eat a lot of it. If it wasn't, eat less of it. <laughs> now we can unpack that a little bit. That actually came from you. You said if it, if it was alive, like think about did the food have a lifespan? Fruit grew on a tree. Vegetables grew in the ground. They have a life. They go bad. They expire. Meat. Mm. I say I say in my videos, if it had a mom or dad, I'm referring to animal products and someone said in the comments, someone's going to take that the wrong way. And I've already gotten enough Jeffrey Dahmer lookalike comments on my TikTok, so I don't need any more of that. (sighs) Obviously, eat animal proteins, eat vegetables, eat fruits. It is so hard to fuck up your diet if you just make a 90% of what you consume that without getting into calories, without getting into protein. If you're just eating mostly meat, fruits, vegetables, potatoes, rice, it's so hard to fuck up. It's so hard to overconsume. I would even, I, I think that it could not, you could not have said that more beautifully. I think also eat the truth. Like, like I'm going to, I saw a comment on your page, Michael, that absolutely made me want to strangle myself. And it was someone going, what are your thoughts on non-animal vegan meat? And it's like, well, first of all, that whole statement is fucking fake. First of all, like what you just said like a word that's not a word and a thing that's not a thing and a truth that's not a truth. Like, what do you think about eating? dry water? <laughs> I'm trying to think about like what's what's similar to that. But like, so think about it. And one great rule of thumb, I think for guys, two pounds of meat a day. You know what? Hermosa even says it. And I'm one of the students from like, or I guess all guys at this point, one of the students from Hermosa. But like literally in terms of also transformation, because he ran a transformation turnaround business that basically taught other physical gyms how to get people to transform against their will, like hypnotize them into transforming. It's so simple. Two pounds of meat a day. If you want $10,000 worth of coaching right now, right here in this session, two pounds of meat per day. If you're a fucking dude, look down. You have dick and balls, meat. Eat two pounds of meat a day. I'm not cutting that out. If you've got I know you're P not. <laughs> and B, two pounds of meat a day. Oh, I can't eat all of that. That sure is really difficult. That's a lot of meat. 
Protein shakes, science. So protein goal. What we're really getting at is protein goal. Why protein? Michael, can you sell us on protein? Can you absolutely sell the fuck out of protein for me? This shit Please. sells itself, but I'd be more than happy to. It rebuilds your cells. That's like, let's start with that. It rebuilds your cells. How else? What, what go else ahead, is it? Go ahead and pinch yourself. Yeah, you're not dreaming. You're really listening to us on the podcast. You're made of protein. I'm pinching my face. <laughs> we are literally amino acids. You think we don't need to eat a healthy amount of that every single freaking day? So hit a protein goal. What's your protein goal? If you're not super fat, go for one gram of, per pound of body weight. If you're 190 mm -hmm. pounds, you've got less than 50 pounds to lose. Try to eat 190 grams a day. If you have more mm -hmm. than 50 pounds to lose based on your estimation, go for one gram per pound of lean body weight. We'll get into that in just a minute. Yusuf is really good at explaining that calculation. Eating more protein is going to do a couple things. It's going to help you recover from your workouts. I can't tell you how many people have told me I was eating 110 grams a day. I'm a 170-pound male, and I was always sore. One of our coaching clients was telling us this yesterday, or the other day, rather. I up my protein to 200 grams, and I'm never sore after workouts anymore. Mm -hmm. So your work, your recovery is going to be better. You're going to build muscle because protein, muscle, you know how that works. I don't have to get into the science. Uh -huh. You're going to build muscle, and protein is the most filling or satiating macronutrient which means it's going to fill you up the most. And it has the highest thermic effect of food. What does that mean? It takes the most energy to digest protein. About 20% of the calories you consume from protein are burned just digesting them. How crazy is that? So you eat 100 calories of protein, you burn 20 calories just digesting that protein. It is a win, 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 win situation. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. Now, protein goal. I told you how to calculate it if you have less than 50 pounds to lose. Can you please explain one gram per pound of lean weight? Wow! Yeah, I just got really fired up right there. Yeah, dude, I think I I I think we we're only at twenty two minutes in. We've edited some time out, and I think that I might explode. Um, okay, so <laughs> that's a, that's a progression from the other. <laughs> anyway, um, some people know, some people some people don't. But, 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 okay, um, protein goal. Why sometimes actually for guys, body weight. Even if you're fucking morbidly obese, body weight. Because what it's going to do when you have a protein goal, it's your body weight. No, let's just hard stamp this. Protein goal, body weight at minimum. Minimum, it should be body weight. And give a fuck if you're 250 and you're 40% body fat. Good, you should be eating more protein because you're eating a bunch, of, a bunch of other bullshit anyway. This will just take over it. Like if you're not hungry enough to eat pure protein, you're not hungry. If you're not hungry enough to eat vegetables, you're not hungry. So what do you do? Well, even when you're craving, if you want a way to win, even when you're like, I'm so hungry. I just want to, I just want to. Fuck my stomach. I just want to mouth pleasure. I just want to be happy right now. Then a lot of protein. Eat pure protein. If you don't feel like it, then you're not hungry. But it should go to your gains. Unless you're jacked. Then you can start going over on the other, other bullshit. Have at it. But for the most part, body weight protein. There's a very simple way to, uh, to, to, to conceptualize that goal. Divide it by 35. And that's how many palm sizes of salmon, chicken, steak, or any other meat, roughly. Most of the lean meats... That's how many palm sizes you need per day. So if my goal is 160, at minimum for me, 160, divided by 35, that's 4.5 palm size servings of protein per day. As long as I eat 4.5 4 palm sizes of protein, one protein shake counts as that, one palm size of beef counts for that, about three eggs would count for that, uh, one, four ounces of filet of, of, of salmon or steak counts for that, 35 grams of protein, burn that in your head. Look at your palm and then go, okay, one volume of my palm worth of meat, a.k.a. your original spoon and fork, motherfucker, a.k.a. your original <laughs> hand measuring tool and your stomach pressure. You look at four and a half palm sizes of chicken, salmon, steak, and what you do is you fucking ingest it. That's it. And you get jacked. It's that simple. $10,000 worth of coaching advice right there. You don't need a cert. You don't need the, the I, I took it. It's useless. It doesn't teach you shit. You need to know palm size of protein and eat it. And then basically any wavering, disregard it. Do not waver. Now, the rest of food, I think we nailed protein. We've got protein down. You know how to eat protein, right? Meat and protein shakes. No fake animal, not real animal meat. It's not meat. Stop it. What, what, it, what went into making that? I don't want to know and I, have, I want nothing to do with it. Not, no, no, none of it. Meat, two pounds of meat a day. We nail protein. We want to nail the rest of food, which is basically carbohydrates, which is fruits, grains, legumes, which is also a protein. Um, animal products, other animal products, other alive things, other things that were alive to make us more alive so that we're here. What else? What other food is there? Carbs, veggies, fats. So what, mm -hmm. what, how, do, how do we navigate that? 
Yeah, I would say if you make it devastatingly simple, I like to I've I've gotten away from calorie tracking lately and when I cut I I diet down more intuitively by limiting my snacking, limiting bouts of eating, right? Limit the amount of times you're developing wow. an elbow problem, which what does that mean? Every time your elbow bends, your fucking mouth opens. <laughs> Limit that instance and you will ultimately be better off. Most people sabotage themselves by eating two or three solid protein dense, moderate calorie meals, but then they just grab handfuls of nuts, handfuls of pretzels all day. And before they know it, they've racked up an additional thousand calories. So you want to make mm -hmm. this painstakingly simple. Like Yusuf <laughs> said, <laughs> one, if you're feeling crazy, go for two palm sized portions, half a plate of protein for lunch. Maybe that's your first meal of the day. Intermittent fasting helps too. have water and coffee until this point, half the plate, make it a protein source of your choosing and then pick a vegetable. I like to keep carbs lower in the afternoon. One, I feel sharper on them. Two, I tend yes. to be able to eat a little more of them. So I like to have them closer to bedtime when I'm easier, more easily restrained. So mm -hmm. I like to do half a plate of protein, half the plate in a starchy vegetable, or excuse me, a cruciferous vegetable. By that, I mean something green, a Brussels sprout. Mm -hmm. I don't eat a lot of broccoli, but some people can handle it. Take that. It's a great low, high volume, low calorie food. Make that your lunch. So that's your, your protein and your vegetable right there taken care of. You got 50 to 100 grams of protein. You got fiber. You got some water with it. You're full for hours. I'm telling you, five, six hours. Now, what would you do for the, I would eat one more meal, maybe a snack. If I'm on a diet, if I'm on a bulk, I'm going to add a snack or two in there. So how would you handle the tail end of the day? I look at actually, so just so we can summarize that in the simplest way possible, because what makes a man successful in his diet is how mind numbingly simple it is. Like, because we can, again, we can only focus on one thing at a time, building our lives, working our family, doing our thing. Food just needs to be how much of, how many of you guys want to give so much thought to allocating your food? No, like you do it already three times a day. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to think about it more. If you're ruled by food, you need to get checked. Um, and that's a great invitation to like look in and just be like, what am I not focusing? Because it shouldn't be food. Um, so we summarize that. Basically, we're saying early hours of the day, front load protein. So just eat protein. If it's got a lot of carbs in it, or if it's a serving of carbs, try to kick that towards like five after four or five o'clock after you've done a lot of your major work and you've used your brain more. Um, what we want to do basically for the early hours of the day, think of it like 6 a.m. to 3, 4, basically, mostly protein. And then after like noon, a lot of vegetables to fill up more space and a lot of water as well. If you didn't already start that in the morning. Now, tail end of the day, adding carbohydrates. Here's the cool thing. If you save carbs for the end of the day, this is where I fit my crumble cookie in. When I felt like only having one, I can't just have one now. I'll eat two in a row and I'll feel sick and I just won't do it right. So um, also know yourself. Know what you foods you can't have and then don't keep that shit in the house um, and minimize how often. Be, like, be, be for real. A lot of us have got food vices, but some people just don't feel like saying it. No, we, we do. We like food. Um, what's important is a healthy relationship to it. If you're going to eat after sundown, small amounts, small quality uh, quantities. And just know that, especially if you're going to work out the next day, that's your fuel. So if you eat a bunch of bullshit at night, that's your fuel. If you're working out in the morning, if you're working out, that's your fuel for getting on and waking up next to your loved one and just give them your best. Your fuel is chicken nuggets, breaded chicken made by a minimum wage worker and a cosmic brownie, I guess. Like, no, I'd rather it be steak and it be carrots and it be um, mushrooms and potatoes and then maybe a dessert um but if it's towards the end of the day that's like your one meal to fuck off like that's you it's the day all good things come to an end cap your day with something that you like but yeah. be for real like really just be for real like whatever it is to you that you want to cap your day with have intention behind it ideally if it's an enjoyable carb cool earn it but place your food properly beforehand so that when you're expending it you don't feel the consequences of in, in, in taking bullshit food i've taken two crumble cookies to the face two nights in a row, my workout yesterday, I was battling between throwing up like halfway through, like back and forth. And that's not comfortable. And I was like, it was enough for me to be like, nah, never mind. Don't want it anymore. Done. I feel, I feel too bad. Why, why, why show up as less because of a craving that I have? Regret was my guideline. I regretted it. I didn't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully that may answer. Oh, one last thing. I think one last final thing for nutrition it's not your fault if you actually are hooked on junk food whatsoever. If you're trying to get off of it, it the odds are stacked against you. The car, the deck is the deck is stacked. Like there are other smart human beings who are literally manipulating you to like these to make your brain go, "I love it. I can't put it down." If you're still gripped by that stuff, we have all the actual sympathy in the world for you. We know that's your real experience. 
But after you check yourself and go, fuck, that sucks. If you keep doing it, you have like you have to get met with like a slap by yourself. Like you might look in the mirror and actually just go, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I getting derailed by Twinkies? Mm -hmm. Why me? Why I'm is him controlling me? Yeah, that's not that's not. And we know that's just, this is going to tie into mindfulness because mindfulness we will get into the big theme of that. But how you eat and how you train is actually all umbrella from mindfulness. If you're talking shit to yourself, we guarantee it. Everyone else can see it and hear it because it's in your language. We know, we know that conversation. It's like a teleprompter on your head. So eat the truth and protein. Yeah. Know what you're supposed to do and just do it. Just do it. I feel like Mindset. I might have rambled. I apologize in advance, guys. Mindset. Oh, I felt it was all valuable. feels like it was just Thanks. a slap in the face for someone who may have needed it. So speaking of slaps in the face for someone who might need it, we've both gotten our slaps in the face about our mindsets and when we're being little bitches. Let's talk mm -hmm. about mindset and mindfulness. My first point in this, I think this is the most important piece. We both do our coaching. I, I don't even like calling it fitness coaching or health coaching anymore. We really teach people how to view the world and the perspectives. Yeah. The, really, it really yeah. is a lifestyle thing. And yeah. when in doing that, I believe the physical battles are always one in the mind. The, the concept of fat loss, Absolutely. muscle gain. It's about how you look at it, how you approach it. And we believe mindset and mindfulness are the most important things. And I, when I think about what's important to me, Every day as an individual and what I think everyone would benefit from is stop excusing yourself, stop giving yourself ways out and stop making agreements with yourself and then breaking them. I've talked about this in videos. Mm -hmm. When you make agreements with yourself, you sign that mental contract with yourself. You cannot not follow through because if you don't, those are micro losses. You know, you know, and no one you else know. may know. And you may not realize it, but just like small wins are a beautiful thing every day, making your bed, going for that walk, drinking that water, small losses start to work against you in micro fashions as well. Mm -hmm. The great James Clear says in Atomic Habits, every action is a casted vote for the person you will become. Good, bad, wow. ugly, neutral, doesn't matter. Everything you do is shaping who you are and who you will be. So when you're in the trenches, you're in the diet, you're struggling, remember you're casting votes for the person you want to become. So the sooner you can start saying, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and go three, not go once, and then find a way to justify not going, the more successful you're going to be because it's going to start to cement the habit. And that'll lead me to my next point, but I want to see if you have anything to add to that. No, I don't. No. Okay. Please. I, th I honestly think I may have come up with a quote that hasn't been said yet on a hustle culture, culture or motivational Instagram page. I was thinking about all the people that ask us, and I know you can relate to this. How do I find the motivation? When I start going, I made a video mm -hmm. responding to a dude this morning who said something to the effect of every time I go to the gym, I, I get sick or something comes up and just derails my momentum. How do I find the motivation to get back into it? And this is where you need to have, uh, everyone says that you have an angel and a devil on your shoulder. You need to have a Goggins on your shoulder. You need to have a little bit of David Goggins in you. Like Respectfully, you got to have a little bit of that mm -hmm. dog in you that can tell mm -hmm. you you're being a bitch right now. Sometimes that is literally mm -hmm. all any person needs is to be told, I'm being mm -hmm. a little bit of a bitch. And mm -hmm. sometimes we're actually sick. Sometimes we're actually hurt. That's different. But sometimes we're just being soft. I find myself in those moments. You probably do too. But what, what the difference between us and people who stay overweight is we check ourselves. We say we're being a bitch. You don't need motivation. Motivation sucks. It's fleeting. This person lacked discipline. And how do we build discipline? Mm. I believe to the point of what I was talking about earlier, the magic pill that everyone looks for is not motivation. It's not a phrase. It's not a quote. It's action. Action yes. creates the discipline that you seek because when you take action, action creates confidence. You go to the gym, you build confidence. Action and confidence over time create momentum to continue doing the thing that you said you were going to do. Action, confidence, and momentum compounded on top of each other over time create the discipline that you seek. So the sooner you can take action, create confidence, manifest discipline, the sooner you will be successful. But it all starts with getting up off the couch and moving. Mm -hmm. I just I just accidentally spieled every point I had about mindset right May, there in one Actually, go. I think that, that you gave people a roadmap, and I feel like I actually want to add one – buffer before action for the person that said, Oh, I get bumped. I bump into things. I get D I get, I, uh, what do you say? goes off the guardrail. Like he just basically goes off the guardrail. One thing I think I would add right before, before anything is create space for yourself. Like 
before you go, and I think this is a this is a telling sign. I'm going to look at analytically speaking, the action of a man going into your comment section and then venting and saying, "I get derailed. I am. I don't know what to do. I am at the effect of my." And what it is really, it's the action of a fucking injured little deer. And dude, I think this is where sometimes it's helpful. And I'm not by any means actually feeling malicious or attacking this person. I think this is, I'm just sharing the mindset that I have and what I would do. I would literally rather fucking off myself than start to bitch on someone else's page about why I suck. What the fuck is that? Like, have you, have you one, no respect for yourself? Two, no, no time between you and God where you can talk about and go, I know it sounds like a hard transition, but to just go, yes. Like I like process an emotion, metabolize an emotion, takes 90 seconds of metabolize an emotion of failure, shame, guilt. Like, let's just say, so you go, you're hurt. And before you go on Michael's page and go, I lack motivation. Can you please rub my soft vagina? Like before you do that, you just go, I feel derailed. I'm on the track. This is so unfair. And then, and then, and then give yourself more space. Actually, we're all going to take a second. We're all going to take a second. We're going to go, something happened to us. We're going to take 90 seconds to metabolize it and just process it and just let us remember we're a part of the world. Let us remember that we are the creators of our future with our actions, with our thoughts, with our words. So you take the motion. You feel that way. Cool. I understand that. I, and I know, I know you're, it's valid. That's why you said it. Pause. Sit with it. And then go, is that, what, is that what God actually had in plan for me? And answer that question. Like, is that, and, and if it was, what's he trying to teach you? What are you trying to teach yourself? What do you need to learn? You said you wanted to get fit. You think you're just not going to get fucking tested? That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. Every, the only difference between people who are fit and unfit is that when they were checked with an emotional stimulus, a trauma, uh, something, something happened, you just got blindsided by an unfortunate event or a mishap or someone said something dumb to you. It's what do you do? Do you show up as less or do you just, or do you choose to listen to your higher self? Period. We all get the choice. It's an illusion, but we all get the choice. So first thing I would say right before action is space, because if we just slap an action on it, it doesn't actually learn fundamentally. Wait a second. I am more. No. I really believe it, and I said it to me, and it came to my head, I am more. I'm going to do this for me. And if you think that's egotistical, it's better to have that than not, especially in your own private conversation with yourself. Why would you want less than that? I feel like this person, one, is doing themselves a giant disservice. They're, uh, I, this sounds annoying to say. They're just empowering themselves. But it's like, what, look at that energy leak. And it's like, is that your – so you're wanting to put out a negative thing about yourself. I, I, I have the same – I have guys asked that – I've literally, so the way I've answered that exact same TikTok before, a guy was like, oh, I'm, I always fall off track after vacation. I always fall off track. I thought, and I'm like, oh, you're never on or off track. You're never on or off track. That's a myth. But I guess off track is where you deserve to be right now to you. Because like no one's saying he's off track besides himself. Absolutely no one is saying anything besides you. And that's where like the micro wins, micro losses, those are the moments where like you pick you and you're yeah. picking, you're making your pick. Are you picking? I don't want to go generic and say the bitch you, but like you're picking your lower you. Yeah. yeah. Like create space for that. Is that what you want? Okay. Well, no one else is going to advocate for you otherwise. I mean, you've got us, but. And if you, you are upset you by this you. or triggered by the way Yusuf's delivering it or it's offending you, then you're probably the person that needs to hear it. I want you to really think about why is this bothering me? why is this upsetting me rather than just letting it get you upset and just think about is is there something in there that I needed to hear the time that you least want to do something that you know you're supposed to do is the time it is most important to do it never forget that that is where in those key moments you build the discipline that you're seeking and where this becomes easy like it is for us I don't want to say easy but easier it is truly yes easier for us to go to the gym, to train, for me to go on these long runs early in the morning, for you to be up every morning at 530 and hit the gym by six, because in the moments we didn't want to in the last five, six, seven years, when it was most mm -hmm. important, we went anyway. That is where the magic yeah. happens. That is the magic pill. Guys, it's mastery. It really is mastery. And it's, 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 it, you must be willing to suck at it and get hit in the face. This sounds like every movie ever that talks about it. it's really mastery. This is the championship. 
you will get to a place where you will not recognize anything about who you are. And I hope that's true. I, I would want that for you. I think I'd want that for everyone. If you, if, you met, if you met my old me and I met my old me, I wouldn't recognize me. I'd be like, that. that's like the best me possible. Holy shit. And what, what that is is self-mastery. If you can't master self, who will? you got to do it for you. And all, all we did was time on task over time. We just took our time with ourselves. That's all, that's all it was. And every one of us has the same ability. Also, people, much as my boy Peter Crone with the hard bar, people, uh, or life, life will present you with people and circumstances to reveal where you're not free. Wherever you're triggered is your therapist. If you get triggered by anything, that's what you have to go, what can't I be with? Does that mean I really value having a, an incredible mindset, a great physique, and a great, and great shape? And that made me so mad because it shows maybe where I can't do it. To the extent in which you're upset is the exact extent in which you can transmute that into energy to create yourself. Because that energy is going to be spent regardless, but what are you going to spend it on? Damn. Okay. My, my point in, in mindset is you've got to be the king of your own world to you, but to you and God, to you and whoever your, your closest relationship is in your consciousness. Think of your brain and your mindset and this gift that you've got, the supercomputer that you've got on this planet we've got. Think of it literally like a gift and it's a supercomputer that will design and create your absolute ultimate reality. And it's what you make it. So if you know that you're full of L's and you're full of losses, rectify them. Look at them and one, apologize to yourself, forgive yourself, raise it to the courts of your, your consciousness, your mind, and be like, can I forgive myself for these things? I just, I just one, you, you have to. And if you think that yourself or your consciousness or God won't, you're doing yourself and other people a disservice. Because I know for a fact that I think everyone who's doing something positive with their lives for a fact, knows that God in your consciousness wants the best for you because it feels the best. That's why it feels good. It's honest. <laughs> so yeah. what we're really saying, I think big picture on mindset, this is, my, this is my submission for my final point, is you have to be the winner in your own world between you and God. And if you, if you don't, no one else is going to appoint it to you or you're just at the mercy of when other people do it. And that's not really a fulfilling life. It doesn't feel like, I don't think. No one's that's coming to save you. No one's coming to yeah. save you. The sooner you can take extreme ownership of your life, as Jocko Willink calls it, ownership of everything you do, the wins, the losses, the successes and failures, the sooner you'll be successful. And that one of the easiest things, the beautiful thing is once you realize it and it clicks, there's no going back. One of the easiest things to take extreme ownership of is your physical vitality, your mm -hmm. health. And when you practice strong body, you build a strong mind. I it's one of the only things you have control over. Right. I mean, I've heard people even say that the only thing you really have control over because freak accidents can happen. You could randomly drop out of a heart attack at 25 like people do sometimes. The only thing we really have control over is our mind. Like fully, yes. totally, 100%. Yes. No circumstance can change that. So that's why we believe it all starts in your head is you can control the conversations you have with yourself. You can control the perspective you have to take around fitness and the altitude from which you view your problems, goals, and challenges. And if you can elevate yourself to look down on your challenges as something you can simply achieve, life's going to get a whole lot easier. Every facet of life, not just fitness, business, personal, mm -hmm. relationships, your self-talk, it all improves. Change your perspective and everything changes. I think yes. that that's everything that I have to share. Um, practical steps. Steps. When we just said take time for yourself. So there, here's the cool thing about mindfulness. The techniques are actually really simple. They actually might be the simplest. And they require you to, you to do significantly less than most other things. So mindfulness with getting your mind right, getting your head right, the one thing that you can control. This is where a little bit of work and a little bit of shaping, containing the container, which is the mind and yourself, um, it takes a little bit of practice. Um, I always refer to journaling, med meditation, and just positive self-talk, positive contemplation, creation, visualization, essentially. I put up, I put this on my story before of my my sort of vision board for my apartment and what I wanted my life to be. My life is nowhere near what I thought it would be. It's I'm actually living in my goal. Respectfully, I'm living in my goal. My, I made it a goal when I was absolutely broke and fat that I would that I was going to be handsome and I was going to be well off and I was going to be well respected. I actually wrote that as a goal. I because I did this uh, goal questionnaire. Actually, this may be a great journal prompt for everybody. Um, number one, there's three questions. One, what is your goal? Like, what is your honest goal? What was your, what is your biggest, baddest, most audacious goal for yourself? Your 10.0 version of you. Like, what is the 10.0 version of you? Who is that? What are they doing? Think about that. And then two, how do you feel actually being them? What is it like being them? 
and write down all the emotions you associate with that. Write down everything you could, like, what does it feel like being that actual template version of you? Three, third question is how long are you willing to wait? How long will it take you? What will this be? Now pause it. If you haven't written these questions down, one, two, three, what are your biggest, baddest, most audacious goals? Two is how do you want to feel? Three is um, how long? And number two, okay, pause. I hope you've written it down maybe, or no, here's a spoiler if you, if you are bad and you went on and listened to this. Number two is actually the goal. How to feel. Like that sounds like, you know, oh, you're listening to your feelers. But no, but literally, number two is the goal. You want to feel important. You want to feel respected. You want to feel worthy. You want to feel confident. You want to feel handsome. You want to feel beautiful. You want to feel proud. You want to feel achieved. That's actually the goal. Now, here's the cool thing. Instead of waiting those, that time, that number three, instead of waiting however long that is, you can actually begin to experience that emotion instantaneously as long as you start laying out the steps as to what do I need to accomplish to begin feeling this. I need to go to the gym. Cool. Check off my to-do list today. I hit my gym. I did my, my push-ups. I deserve to feel proud, accomplished, like I'm actually that template version of me because I'm proving it to me, no one else. So with that little prompt, that's an example of journaling and self-introspection, just self-investigating, questioning, all beliefs, like what do you actually want? How do you want to feel? If you haven't planned out how you want to feel and what you want your life to be, you haven't taken steps towards that, I just doubt that that's really the case. And some people know they haven't, and hopefully this is the kick and ass that you needed because I think a lot of people, I give them credit, like they probably already are trying as best we can, but that's maybe one way to help. Journaling, I meditate, listen to frequencies, I'm fucking weird like that. Um, but I definitely believe in the chakras. I believe in Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. I believe in manifestation. I believe we're all on an orb on a planet of molten rock that's existed for hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions of years. And we are all gifts and we are all offerings. And we are living in a utopia in a future that at one point, none of our ancestors could have ever imagined. We have cell phones. Michael and I record this podcast on a computer and we've never met before. 2,000 miles of away us from each other. Yeah, like literally. And so we're just speaking into, we, we made this. How insane is that? Like we're in a dream age. So mindfulness, that may be the cherry on top for mindset, meditation, journaling, get into woo-woo, get into yourself, most importantly. Get into yourself. Get into yourself and your relationship with your purpose and what your life is going to be. You rooting and coming from that place in your life is just going to make everybody's lives around you also significantly better. Your parents, your mom, your dad, your loved ones, your friends, your coworkers, your, your best friends, people that even you hate all of a sudden. You're like, why is he so good? Why is he so nice? Why is he so loving? Why is he so like he's him, like he's doing his thing. Like they, they and, then, and all it'll do is highlight, the, I'm not gonna, uh, damn. All it's gonna do is highlight their insecurities if they talk back to you. But anyway, I'll leave that. That's that's me projecting. <laughs> that's me projecting, I think, okay. I would, if this mic that I have wasn't so expensive, I would drop the mic because I think you, I, that's a mic drop moment. I don't have anything to add to that. I think that we can, we can cap it here. I think that there's a lot of practical oh, value. I mean, I don't have anything to add for once. My chatty for, ass has nothing to add. For what it's worth, I also don't know if Michael's going to get off the call and be like, Yusuf, you fucking rambled. So just know that it, hopefully it comes to a place of humility. And I'm oh, again, we just want the best for everybody, we feel. That's all. So in summation, recapping the practical steps. Move every day when it comes to your fitness. Move every day 45 to 60 minutes. Get in the gym three times a week. Nutrition. 90% of your diet should come from something that at one point was alive, that had a lifespan, had parents, grew in the ground, grew on a tree. Focus on protein. Go for one mm -hmm. gram per pound. Even if you fall short, you'll feel a lot better from eating a lot more protein because most of you motherfuckers need way more of it. Mm -hmm. Now, mindset. Stop excusing yourself. Stop signing agreements with yourself in your head and breaking them. Stop telling yourself to start tomorrow. Get a little bit of that Goggins in you. Get a little bit of that dog in you. Don't be afraid to call yourself out. Call yourself a bitch. Give yourself space when you start feeling down or unmotivated to feel that, acknowledge it, and then take the action to push, pa push past it, which will lead to you building confidence, which will lead to you building momentum, which will lead to you building discipline. And then write down your goals. Write down what you want to achieve. Write down what you want to feel. You don't want to be jacked. You want to feel what being jacked brings you. You want to feel respected. You want to feel handsome. You want to feel beautiful. You want to feel strong. You don't necessarily care about the look. Then write down the time frame. And then fuck the time frame. Start today. Take action. Those are, I don't think it gets more practical than that. We just gave you a $10,000 masterclass in 
less than an hour. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly and with humility. If this was helpful, this I'm hoping is really the tip of the iceberg for us. We, we, we have nothing more than we want to share than what we feel truly has worked for us and what's authentic and honest to us and how we really feel about it, because this is how we really feel about it. <laughs> Genuinely. Michael, thank you for bearing with me during my cursing and Michael's family that listens to this. I appreciate you. And I hope that you guys don't think I'm at this way or that's actually who I care about the most is Michael's family more than anybody. <laughs> to my, yeah. To my family, I'm working on it. I promise. I still let it slip a few times, but you know, this is at, the, at least, you know, that we're being authentic. This is who we are. This is how we really talk. We're not putting on a facade. If not, yeah. if I was put on a facade, I definitely wouldn't add curse words to my digital footprint. Let's say that. That's fair. So I if would. you got if you if you got some <laughs> if you got some value out of this as always like comment and subscribe we appreciate it if you're on Spotify leave us a review it really does help us out boost our podcast get it out to more people more listeners we feel strongly about the fact that we may be able to say some things that could change in people's lives and we say things that someone may need to hear if you liked it share it with a loved one if you're a lady with a man share this with him if you're a lady and you got value out of it let us know so this is episode nine and we look forward to seeing you all in episode ten thank you for listening. Ah. We didn't do a step check. Oh, shit. Michael forgot. Yep. This is actually a second take, but we're going to mash it into the episode. So before we sign off, pretending like we never signed off in the first place, whoops, we are going to run a quick step check per usual. We're going to get the hashtag to the top of IG. I don't care what it takes. So hit us with your step check first. 942 PST, 3,000 steps. Not bad for 942, honestly. I haven't gotten up an hour. 1242 EST, and I'm at 12,672 steps. Nice. Again, I ran nice. unfair advantage. We're not keeping score anymore. Everybody gets a trophy. Fucking psych. <laughs> All wieners, no losers. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. I thought.